carrying the name Larry Nance Jr. is uh, in basketball world is, is, is quite a bit of pressure. Okay, I'm the dad. You don't have a choice. <laughs> So growing up with a dad that you know played multiple years in the NBA was was really unique. Dynamite Larry Nance. He played 13 years in the NBA, six and a half for the Suns, six and a half for the Cavs. Harper to Nance, he drives, win with a right hand. Nance with a big basket again for the Cavaliers. We had such a close team. I just love those guys. Mark Price, Brad Doherty, Hot Rod. Price goes left wing down in the corner to Wheelo. Now to Nance in the lane. Whips it underneath the Hot Rod who slams it home. I felt like we could have won a championship. We didn't, and I'm totally comfortable with that because I was really happy with playing with the group I had. He retired in 95. I was born in 93. So I didn't quite watch him play live or at least remember it. People really appreciated that group. They really enjoyed how hard we played and the type of game we played. Price down the floor, give to Nance, drive, slam. People still know me for that. I didn't quite realize who my dad was or why people kept asking for pictures until you know middle school, high school, when I really started following and appreciating the game of basketball. He played soccer first, which I'm sitting there all the time hoping, we yeah, hope basketball is coming. Yeah, I really fell in love with the game around high school, uh, my sophomore year. At that point, it was like, man, I've got the best teacher anybody could ask for. We talk basketball all the time around my house. We just started, you know, kind of working together, shooting together, and if I was going through something, if I ever had any questions, he was more than willing to help me out through that. But, you know, he was never overbearing and like, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. He just kind of let me find my own way. That's when I was beginning to watch him and see all the things he do, the way he play, the way he play defense to understand the game. I was like, yeah, he's good enough to play in this league. The Los Angeles Lakers select Larry Nance Jr. from the University of Wyoming. We was all as a family in our house and we put a sign on our yard, please don't bother us tonight because we don't know what's going to happen and we was all yelling and screaming in the house. Bryant using the screen from Black. Spread it out. Nance sticks it. Just proud. I mean, because I know how hard it is to make it to this level and what he's been through. He's not afraid to work. That's what I think about every time I see him do something great. Oh my goodness. Finding out I got traded was, you know, not easy. Moving from LA to Cleveland, like, oof. Not many people besides me were very excited about that. It's not the weather. Promise you that. But we love the people here, and it's such a great place to raise a family. I mean, it was like a dream come true, getting to play, getting to play for the Cavs, because the team I've rooted for my whole life, and and gotten to watch play growing up, and you know, getting to play with one of my childhood idols, and you know, and LeBron James. Larry Nance Jr. was born in Akron, Ohio, so he's not the only guy from Northeast Ohio on the court right now. That's number 23 guy as well. Inside and a pound, shaking the building, Larry Nance Jr. That was his first alley-oop dunk. Your 2018 Slam Dunk Competitor. Larry Sr. here, 1984, won the first dunk contest. They asked me because I was dunking a lot. Larry Nance for a wham, wham, wham. Once I heard Dr. J was going to be in it, Dr. J is my favorite player. I was hoping if I won, I was going to buy this 67 Camaro. So I ended up winning, got the car. One of my fondest memories because I went against my hero. With the dunk contest, I had uh, originally agreed to do it with the Lakers. And so I had these great ideas, you know, I'm gonna bring out some greats, I'll kill it, you know. So when I got traded to the Cavs, I had to scrap my whole routine and start from scratch, which was uh, not easy with a week left. I didn't tell my dad, but I knew I wanted to do something with his jersey and recreate one of his dunks. Oh, yeah. I had chills, and I was really proud that he thought about me to do that, and I thought it was really cool. Oh, yeah. We always argued back and forth on who did the dunk better. I, <laughs> I give it to him. It was awesome for him to think about his dad at that moment and do my dunk like that. I had to really work to get him out on the court with me to see if he could throw the lob. You know, I think he was more nervous than I was. If you look at it in slow motion, he has a seven foot two wingspan, so to swing that ball all the way around, he had to stay in the air a long time. I definitely think he should have won. You know, he just made it look too easy. 
I wore my Laker hat like two or three days. And they're like, why are you wearing that? I'm like, they sent my son home. That's, that's my favorite team right now. <laughs> So through my dad's career, you know, I got to see a bunch of hardwood classics games on ESPN, the old black and white VHS tapes he'll pop out every once in a while and we'll watch them. The coolest thing to me is that he had his jersey retired. You will forever be a Cav. Let me say that again. You will forever be a Cav. That's a handful of players in, in NBA history that have had their jerseys retired. One of the biggest moments in my career because I like to work hard and do the little things, do all the dirty work, and the fans really appreciated that. So obviously, this team appreciated that by retiring my jersey. I would like to say, that is awesome. It's so funny, that night the jersey went up, I'm sitting there looking at it, I got Larry in my arms, I and mean, he's looking at it. It's just one of those great nights. Number 22 will never be worn by another Cavs player. And when I got traded, I got the text like, hey, here are our available numbers. And you know what? I'll take uh, 24. I think he should have worn 22. You know, they asked him that, and he gave a great answer. He said, you know what? That's my dad's accomplishment. I don't want to take that away from him. After the dunk contest, brought out my dad's old 22 and you know, kind of got me and him both thinking. And I want to call the Cavs up and say, what can I do to get 22 on his back? Because that's what I wanted so bad. The only way I would wear it is that it had to stay in the rafters. I didn't want it to come down at all. He earned that. And the night he had that on there, I was just, I don't know, I just could have bust in the flames. I was so proud to see that number on him. Larry Nance Jr. wearing 22. His dad's number. If I played today and I need two weeks to get in shape, <laughs> I couldn't beat him. <laughs> he's just so much stronger and he's getting better all the time still. I want to improve every season. And, uh, you know, if you do that, you can't help but set records and meet higher goals and standards and stuff like that. I think he's still blooming to where now he's beginning to handle the ball, begin to shoot threes. As long as he keeps doing stuff that makes him uncomfortable, I can't say how good he's going to be because see, I think the sky's the limit for him. I've never heard any stories that are negative about my dad, which is a rare thing in this world. So that makes me super proud to carry this name, and hopefully I can uh, continue doing it justice. Ball in his hands. Game on the line. Friday, no. Tipped up by Nance at the horn. Larry Nance Jr., the Cavalier hero. 